Hi, everyone. I'm Katina McHenry. Welcome to another recording of our Big Ideas Show, where we delve deeper into faculty research happening here at the Macomb School of Business. Joining me today is a, a becoming a familiar face in our Big Ideas, Sebastian Hohenberg. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sebastian. It's good to see you. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Katina. Absolutely. So we are talking today about a brand new piece of research. I'm going to read the title of your paper, and then we'll talk more about it. I love this piece of research. Sure. Because I think it relates to so many people right now and just kind of through history of, <laughs> of buying cars. So let me read the title of the paper. It's called Open Negotiation, the Back End Benefits of Salespeople's Transparency in the Front End. So it's basically, um, you know, I think everybody's had an experience of buying a car. Now that we have the internet, car buyers are more informed about prices and some of the hidden costs, which according to your research can force some of the salespeople to be a little bit more transparent about uh, all the details related to the price. So talk to us a little bit about some of the, uh, some of the inner workings of your paper and what you guys found in your research. Sure. So uh, as you know, Katenia, I'm fascinated by disconnects between theory and practice. And in fact, uh, it's one of the overarching themes uh, in my research to try to bring these two groups, theory and practice, closer together. And this project um, yeah, that we are talking about today uh, is very exciting to me because um, yeah, it addresses uh, like a whole bunch of these disconnects. So, for example, um, according to traditional negotiation theory, um, there, is, um, yeah, there are certain strategies that work in these, uh, what they call situations of information asymmetry. Yeah? But um, as we all know, and uh, I think you uh, pointed this out nicely earlier, um, this information asymmetry, which basically means that the seller has an information advantage over the buyer, doesn't exist in many negotiations today. Uh, anymore. Yeah? And because there are these websites yeah, uh, where we can get detailed, not only product information, but also price comparisons, there is more information symmetry yeah, um, between the buyer and the seller. And you mentioned cars earlier on, yeah? but there are uh, so many other industries that are similar, such as, for instance, purchasing household equipment. We can visit these websites before actually starting the entire sales process, such as Edmunds, TrueCar, or Fixer.com. And um, here we can get detailed product information, but we also, and this is important, we can get detailed information on the seller's reservation price. Yeah? And so our research is the first study that examines this new negotiation uh, context of information symmetry. And in particular, we test and develop this new strategy for this context, which we call open negotiation. And so what were some of the things you were looking to learn from consumers? Mm -hmm. So from consumers, basically, um, yeah, the re reaction yeah, to this new strategy is important. Yeah? So, um, and we have, um, I think, uh, very important findings because open negotiation, which means disclosing the product's true value proactively to the buyer, works yeah, for, for the buyers, yeah, but also creates benefits for the sellers. And um, it's not only the uh, mere re uh, revealing of this uh, important and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, very sensitive information, but it's also um, a question of how you actually conduct this open negotiation. Our findings show that you need to do it proactively. You need to make sure that the buyer is actually informed. Yeah? So in other words, you need to make sure that this information symmetry actually exists. Yeah? And third, um, and this is what you mentioned uh, yeah, in the very beginning, um, it's important yeah, to make a connection with a buyer. Yeah? And we see that um, open negotiation works well in, if there is a uh, face-to-face -face interaction, yeah, such as in person, for instance, or through a video call, for, uh, for example. But it's much more difficult to, um, yeah, to build trust yeah, with a buyer um, through chat-based yeah, or, uh, yeah, or text-based communication. Did you find that the negotiations um, were referencing larger purchases like houses, cars, items that were a little mm. bit more high end and more expensive? Exactly. Yeah. So the context that we are focusing on is uh, a so-called multi-level um, yeah, purchasing uh, situation yeah? that usually consists of two elements. The front end, which is a high involvement purchase, yeah, such as a car yeah, or I mentioned solar systems yeah, or um, yeah, a boat. Yeah? So all these um, yeah, uh, high, high involvement purchases. 
And um, yeah, the second part is the so-called aftermarket or the back end of the deal, yeah, which are the so-called or, or these um, purchases that amend the main purchase, yeah, such as a services contract yeah, or um, a, a add-on yeah, or any items yeah, that relate to this main purchase. Do you, did you find that uh, some of the people included in the, in the study actually were able to use some of the suggestions or tactics when they went out and bought one of these larger items, for instance, cars? So this is mm -hmm. a good time of year for a lot of people to purchase cars. Yes, yes, definitely. And I can also uh, yeah, uh, tell about my own uh, yeah, car purchasing experience. And yes. so um, yeah, uh, one, one recommendation that I would give to everyone who is looking for a new car uh, in the season, go to these websites uh, such as Edmunds, True Car or KBB. Uh, find out the, um, as much information as you can about the specific model and the specific area that you conduct the purchase in. And then when you enter the dealership, let the people or let the salesperson know that you are informed yeah, by actually mentioning that you know about the existence of these websites. Yeah. This would make it way more likely that uh, the seller or the salesperson will engage in such a negotiation strategy, such as open negotiation, where, uh, which is essentially beneficial for both uh, sides yeah, of the table. Right. So do you feel like because buyers uh, can approach um, a, a purchase like this with a lot more information that the salesperson has to be more honest and more transparent because they know that now buyers are equipped with more information before they even begin the negotiation? Definitely, definitely. I think that in, uh, in the digital age, yeah, we uh, as, uh, yeah, as salespeople, we need to be way more transparent and open and honest yeah, with the buyers because essentially at some point um, buyers will be able to verify the information that they have learned in a sales negotiation. And, um, and on the one hand, yeah, as in our study, this is a big opportunity to build trust and yeah, to do um, something that was very difficult to realize in the old ages yeah, where um, uh, buyers didn't have the opportunity to verify these uh, these pieces of information. But on the other hand, if you're misbehaving, um, this will basically um, uh, be the end uh, of the, uh, yeah, or the beginning of the end uh, of the relationship. Yeah. Do you think that's one of the reasons why people are just cutting out the, the salesperson altogether and just buying a, a car or a big purchase just online without having to deal with that, with the person and the interaction of the person mm -hmm. or the salesperson? I think that um, this has advantages and disadvantages. Yeah? Yes. So, uh, for example, in our in our automotive study, we see that uh, many customers these days uh, conduct the entire purchasing process through the internet uh, department via text based uh, or um, yeah, or chat functions. Mm -hmm. However, um, yeah, although that uh, can be a uh, yeah, a um, yeah, an efficient process yeah, uh, for the front end of the deal we see that it is much more difficult via text-based messages yeah, to build these trusting relationships. And I would argue that um, yeah, a trusting relationship, yeah, uh, even with a, with a car dealership, can be very valuable yeah, to, certain, to certain buyers. Yeah? So if you are a buyer that is interested in having a trustworthy relationship, yeah, not only uh, yeah, for the purchase of the car, but perhaps um, uh, 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 containing the entire services uh, and um, other aftermarket items. I would say that um, opting for a, uh, an in-person or a, a video call uh, has uh, various, uh, various advantages, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, so to end our talk, what would be your best advice if you're getting ready to go buy a car? I mean, you mentioned it a little bit uh, a little bit ago, but maybe your your two top pieces of advice, if you're about to buy a car or a boat or a house, mm -hmm. <laughs> what would be your best piece of advice yeah, the, for the buyer? Yeah, the most important thing is um, yeah, that in this age yeah, of uh, information availability, as a buyer, I want to um, be as much informed as possible, especially if it is such a uh, such a high involvement product yeah, as a car yeah, or or a boat yeah, or 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 any item that is associated with a high um, financial value. The second thing is I want to make this knowledge or this uh, yeah, that I have this information. I want to make it transparent to the to the seller, so that the seller can be more confident in um, yeah, in also applying these more open types of negotiation strategies. Excellent. 
Thank you so much, Sebastian. If you would like to read his paper, it's called Open Negotiation, the Backend Benefits of Salespeople's Transparency in the Front End. And we'll have a link in the description of this video if you'd like to go and read the paper. Thank you so much for joining us today on our Big Idea Show. We will see you next time.